Whoa, look at all of the really cool teaser footage for this episode. I bet this is going to be a real good one. Well, the only way to know is to stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them, your window to the microscopic world. So, a few years ago, I stopped here at the Great Salt Lake in near Salt Lake City, Utah, and it was one of the very first episodes that I filmed for this channel. And uh, the main thing that I collected here was some brine shrimp eggs. And I uh, collected them and then I brought them back to my house and I hatched them. I made a really cool time lapse. Um, and surprisingly, it was one of the more popular videos on my channel. Uh, probably because a lot of students uh, in elementary, middle schools uh, have brine shrimp in their classrooms and it's used for curriculums to teach about. Uh, life cycles and stuff like that. And so, anyway, but one of the commenters in the video pointed out that, you know, there's a ton of other things in this lake besides brine shrimp. And um, I have wanted to come back out here to uh, prove that person right, as well as uh, showcase uh, just really cool stuff out here. You know, this is a really unique lake and in fact it's it's so salty it's kind of been known as the the dead sea of of america like you can basically float in this water now unfortunately i'm not dressed for for swimming i mean i'll, I'll wade a little bit in to get some of this stuff but uh how about this enough talk let's let's start uh showing you guys this this nature because there's already you know just walking along the shoreline there is some cool stuff to show you. One of the main things is brine flies. So it's kind of uh, similar to brine shrimp, brine meaning salt water. Uh, so let's kind of show you this and get some samples here. Now I want to show you guys too that this beach isn't really like any other beach that you'd see kind of like on the ocean. It is so salty you can literally see the salt on the uh, surface of the sand here like this is all just straight up salt very very crazy um, it's also very very smelly a lot smellier than regular beach that you'd think of but yeah so let's take a look we can see all of these brine flies here so these flies are a hugely important part of the ecosystem here. Uh, the Great Salt Lake is a great spot for migratory birds. There's a lot of pelicans and California gulls that come by. And the brine flies and the shrimp here are critical to the bird's diet. Here, let me uh, just walk into this water and get some close-ups. So this is great. I haven't had to travel really far and you can see uh, this water's only, you know, like an inch deep, which is really nice. Uh, there's lots of little brine shrimp here. So I'm going to hopefully get a couple of these to bring home. And yeah, look, there's a couple that's mating. That's fun. Just hanging on to each other. And uh, yeah, so you can see kind of this whole ecosystem here you know there's lots of little brine shrimp and then here we've got the brine fly swarm there's probably billions of them along this area and then all of this little algae and stuff that i neglected to get before so that is what we're going to get a lot of this time we're going to get some algae and maybe we'll see some protists and other things but yeah uh, I also brought my underwater uh, camera attachment, so I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper see if we can get some some cool underwater footage for with these brine shrimp. So I brought a couple of collection vessels, and so I am going to try to collect different varieties of things. So 
as you can see like there's these little groups of debris I th I'm gonna try to collect and then there are some areas that are just green algae somewhere else let me show you a good example uh, that's just kind of growing on the sand so like here's one right there uh, they're just like these little mounds that look a little bit harder so I'm gonna collect some of those mounds some of this floating algae and stuff that's in these little areas that's this is probably like all the larva of the brine shrimp and stuff and brine flies and whatnot but it is very very interesting yeah let's get all right so we're in the great salt lake water and this is the sample that was a bunch of um it kind of looked like little mounds of algae and so i was hoping to find some of that and i think this little group of individuals is the algae that i was looking at some unicellular uh, algae like critters all right after some digging around i found out that this is likely a species of single-celled algae called dunaliella and it is really interesting because it is an extremophile and more specifically a halophile meaning that it is able to thrive in some very salty extreme conditions that a lot of other microbes cannot survive in now, I'm at the bottom half of the Great Salt Lake where I collected these, but in the northern half of the Great Salt Lake, it is even saltier. And there's another species of Dunaliella that thrives over there in the even more salty conditions, and they are a little bit more pinkish in color. And there are so many of them in the lake that they end up turning the entire north half of the lake very pink. So you can actually even see this on uh, like Google Maps or, or Google Earth or something like that. And uh, yeah, so eventually I'm planning on going to the northern half of the lake, but uh, it is going to be like a five hour day trip in order to do that. So next time. So here's a pretty good example of the size that we're looking at. This is a single grain of salt, it looks like. And uh, so yeah, so this is a single grain of salt at 40 times magnification. And then here we are at 100 times. And what you see here are some scratches in the cover slip and stuff. And then we zoom in to 400 times. And that is where we are finally able to see the, uh, sorry, I was zooming the wrong way. Um, yeah, these little unicellular algae. So here's another size comparison. On the left-hand side, we're able to see a brine shrimp egg, and then we see lots and lots of Dunaliella viridis everywhere in this uh, area with dark field background. So very, very cool. I love me some dark field, so I gotta get it in here. So here's another cool thing. This is a part of a brine shrimp's arm or appendage, I guess, and it is used to help filter food towards it. And on every single one of its arms, it has like these big fuzzy uh, little things that kind of help rake the food towards it. And you can almost see that it's almost perfectly fit for this really small algae. Now, when I was looking at this, I seemed to think that there were algae that were trapped inside of the actual little feather-like thing. So I had to zoom in and see, and it looks like that's actually the case. Now, I don't know if the uh, single-celled algae were smart enough to figure this out on their own, or if they've kind of just done this on accident, but um, either way, it's probably, you know, a good survival mechanism. Uh, if anyone else has any idea what how to explain this phenomenon, I'd be interested to hear your ideas. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it was something pretty cool. Now, I mentioned the brine flies at the beginning of this episode, and so, of course, I had to find a brine fly. Now, luckily, there was a dead one in my sample already, so I didn't have to kill one, because uh, putting a live one under the microscope is pretty difficult. So, anyway, I first uh, put a wing under the microscope, and you can see the really fine detail here. Um, I think it looks really cool and uh, just super delicate, you know? Um, another really cool thing is that I really like the edge of the wing. Um, you can see it's kind of spiky here. 
And I know that some of you guys might be grossed out by looking at flies or other insects under the microscope, but we've just got to do it. So here we are. And uh, you can see this kind of looks like a basic house fly. I mean, I don't know. I don't look too much at flies under the microscope, so I don't know too much of the difference. But uh, one of the cool things that I was able to see was the uh, compound eyes. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen, but there are some really great images on the internet of eyes, like especially of like dragonflies. And uh, you can see it's really hard to focus on these things, but um, when people take photographs of these, they usually do it with a microscope like this, but they end up taking dozens, if not hundreds of pictures, just focusing in and out and in and out to get, you know, every single layer, and then they stack all of the photos together to get a complete image. Now, the last thing I want to do is rewind the clock a little bit with these brine flies and take a look at some brine fly larvae. Now, I didn't see these until I was about to get rid of this sample, and all of a sudden, some of them started showing up. And they were kind of wiggling and squiggling all around, and so I decided to put a few of them on the slide together, just to see how they would behave. And the most interesting thing happened, so they were all kind of, you know, twerking their bodies around, I guess. I, I don't know the, the right word for it. Uh, but then they started kind of clinging on to each other, and I wasn't sure, like, what I was observing, but it definitely looked really cool. Um, you know, the cool thing about insect larvae is that they usually have, you know, like, little appendages, lots of legs to help, you know, climb around and onto things. And so, in this case, they were all kind of climbing around and on each other. Now, after observing this for a while, I realized that these guys probably want to be back in some algae and stuff and, you know, so they can have a sense of, you know, what's going on instead of just free floating in the water. So I added some algae to the glass slide and then I uh, put it back under the microscope and it took a while for some, but Others were immediately able to sense that the algae was there, and they went in and dug in. These guys were very, very hungry, and they started feeding like crazy. And so you can see some of them just eating here, and some that are just trying to, you know, wiggle around. And eventually they'll sense the, the algae. But uh, yeah, it was really, really cool to watch. So I think I'm going to wrap up the episode right about here, and uh, I hope that you guys will join me next time, because we definitely are going to return to the Great Salt Lake and go to the northern half to see the other algae, because we got to complete the story. And uh, if you guys have any suggestions of what else I should look at or other places that I should go, please let me know in the comments. Also, um, I'm also starting live streams every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. So please come and join the party. It's a lot of fun. We just did our first one this week. And uh, I've also got some other great videos coming up. So uh, big thanks, as always, to my patrons and to everyone that subscribed. And if you're not, you should definitely join because it is a lot of fun. Anyway, we'll see you guys later.